Hello and welcome back to the channel. I hope that you have all had a great, or still having a great festive period and that you had a great Christmas day. We are reviewing The Mandalorian Season 1. This is going to be a mullet style, meaning that the first portion of the video will be a review. And then after that point, we're going to talk about spoilers and the great moments within The Mandalorian. After the stories of Jango and Baba Fett, another warrior emerges in the Star Wars universe. The Mandalorian is set after the fall of the Empire and before the emergence of the First Order. We follow the travels of a lone gunfire in, in the outer reaches of the galaxy far from the authority of the New Republic. So just before we get into this, um, this in-depth video, make sure that you like, comment and subscribe. Make sure you do subscribe. There is like, don't know why, because YouTube has a really shoddy algorithm. There's about 53% of the traffic that comes over to this channel. And that, and for some reason, it's not, those people are not subscribing. But if you're enjoying this, um, um, this content, because I know you're watching these videos, make sure you press the subscribe button and click your bell notifications. It really helps the channel out. So without further ado, we know that this is um, the creator for this show is John Favreau. We know that he um, directed Iron Man and brought us Elf and many other uh, uh, many other really good films. And I think what is so great with The Mandalorian as a Star Wars um, show is that it follows a very good strategic plan out for well let's say the first four episodes because then five and six was a bit a bit on the ropes a bit shaky but let's just carry all these positives um you know it had this thing of you know we'll, we'll give the audience hidden subtext exposition as in you know leaving these little breadcrumbs throughout the season well throughout the episodes and then tying up scenes that had first initially happened at the beginning of of the episode uh connect with the end you know and that really worked um so continuity first hidden subtext exposition three-dimensional characters characters that we wholesomely care about um and then after that um we got this great first person narrative into um into mando's life you know why is it that he has the motives and the ideologies that um that he currently has in the present you know so i, I kind of like the fact that you know they didn't they didn't stick with a, with a linear storyline they stuck they stuck with a non-linear um storytelling to kind of give us the understanding of where Mando comes from. And I thought that was all excellent. Um, and just to talk a little bit more about Mando, um, he he's a complex character to say the least. And I think what makes his character so flushed out is the fact that, yes, he is an anti-hero, but at the same time, he's very likeable, you know. And I think it's clever in the sense that his character kind of fills out this void within his own life because he appreciates um, Yoda because he knows what it's like to be alone. But at the same time, that empathy comes out through him, through Yoda, but at the same time, he, he does not care. <laughs> he doesn't really mind to do a dodgy job or a criminal job or, um, you know, if he's still one of his parts. He doesn't mind blowing you away without a moment's notice, you know, and I think that's what makes him such a um, such a, a flushed out character. He's very complex in the, in the sense of his ideology and his mindset. And I think that the way that um, John Favreau and Dave Filoni, the way that they capture that, I can't really detest it. I have no discrepancies with it. It's it's really, really good. Um, now, let's talk a little bit more about um like the cinematography um the, the product design and what's so great again with mandalorian is that you kind of feel like when you watch any other show um it feels like they're, they're constantly waiting to get to 
wherever wherever the episode's being taking place, like they're constantly waiting to get to a definitive moment in like a second act of their episode or the third act, just to kind of create an like an exuberant fight scene. And look, not not every episode needs to be like that, but I feel like, but I feel like with the the Mandalorian, you're really you really are getting the bang for your buck. You know, you're you're getting all the essentials. You know, and I feel like. It's a way of Disney putting their foot in the door, you know, because it's like the first act, the first five minutes, you get this freaking huge shot of a planet. And then somewhere in the second act, there's a fight scene or again, another beautiful shot or um, third act. Again, it, it's, it, it, it's all done in within the means of the story. And I think, you know, um, I appreciate, I do appreciate the, um, uh, I appreciate the fact that the, exe the executive producers are doing this to capture our imagination and keep our interest within the show. Um, I think that, um, again, Gr Grief Karga, who's part of the guild, he has an interesting character arc. You know, he kind of, um, he goes from kind of, you know, but essentially not really having a purpose to then near the end kind of changing his perspective on life and I think that um, also Cara Doom that was in this uh, played by um, Gina Carano she done really well and there was a lot of speculation about her in general because a lot of people thought that you know she's just like an MMA fighter or a UFC fighter and and I think that she done a great job in subverting all the, all the well the naysayers and doubters because I think that there wasn't one moment I looked at her performance. I thought that she's that, and I thought that she was phoning it in. I didn't think that one bit. And obviously, the man, the 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 kid, the myth, the legend, Baby Yoda. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't get any more cute than that, you know. Um, again, and even the moments with, and you know what I like as well. It felt like this show went back to the roots of what Star Wars is. And arguably, okay, there are moments of CGI within this show initially, but there is an aesthetic look about it, you know, with animatronics and the way things move. And it has the, it has the, good, the good blend of the extravagant CGI and a good blend of actual um, puppetry work. And I think that goes back to the movies like A New Hope, well, you know, the original, the original Star Wars that happened 40 years ago. It was all about craftsmanship. It was all about, about that. Um, I also like the, the underground kind of, I forgot what the name is, jump in the comment section, you, you know, where um, Mando goes to get his signets and stuff like that. I thought that part of it, and the lady, the, the leader of the Mandalorians, I thought she was epic as well. And, Boy, does she get epic in that episode eight, oh, holy moly. Um, and the main protagonist, um, it, 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 it's weird because the Mandalorian, Mando, because he's so flushed out as a character, I don't think audience members really care where he ends up. You know, like when you've got a character like that, that you can constantly be behind, you don't really need to care too much about what the villain is or what, what essentially happened because he's so well written. It's almost like as if you come, it's like if you were to completely take away the fact that he has this attachment to Baby Yoda, he'd be a straight up villain. He's a bounty hunter, he works for the guild. He'd be straight up, he'd be, the, he'd be a waste man, wouldn't he? And, and, you know, and I just love that about him, you know, he, I love the fact that he blows hot and cold, but only at the end of the day, he's got a heart, you know, and that's, I love that, man, I really do. Um, and you know what, um, we're going to get into spoilers now, but if I'm going to give this the rating for the first season of The Mandalorian, I'm going to give it um, a 9 out of 10. I, I love, I love everything about it. Um, it was really good. Now I'm going to get into spoilers. Um, if you've not seen The Mandalorian Season 1, I suggest you get out of here. 
or if you have or you're still on current episodes, make sure that you save this current video to, um, to your watch later list and come back because I'm going to talk about some of the great moments now. Presumably some of the moments that you may be missing out on right now. So again, thank you. Leave a like, subscribe. God bless you. Now, moving on. Um, uh, moving on. Let's talk about the, the, the great moments now. Like, I, like we kind of said, well, in, um, in the review side. Um, the, the first person narrative of, of what, what, um, what Mando was in the first four episodes all culminated to that last episode and the way that it was done. It, it, I just, I don't know what it is, but I love a story that can have hidden exposition subtext and it can pay off. And it's such a simple thing when you come to think of it. Like, for, okay, look, just, just in a general sense. So we see Mando, his, his parents, of, we don't even know if they're, they're dead or alive, really, do we? Um, and obviously the um, Imperial machine thing comes to try to mash him up. And when the door opens, the cinematography is amazing. Um, I hope other people are picking up on this. Door opens. We see the light, and obviously we see a Mandalorian there that's there to save him. Obviously, he goes on to be the man he is today. And what I love is that when it comes back to that very moment, um, IG comes back and shoot. Oh, uh, uh, we'll talk about more about IG in a second, but IG comes back, does his thing, and the cinematography that we see Mando shrouded in darkness, and then he comes out into the light, no look headshot. Spartan front kick to the back. Uh, uh, when that happened, I only, I only threw my laptop into the air. Honestly, I was like, I was like, yo, this, this is filmmaking. This is how you do it. And just that moment alone, was, oh man, it was, it was, it was everything. I, I, I don't mean to piss anyone off, but that though, though, the first ten minutes of the episode day, I found it more entertaining than the. Then the majority of what um, Rise of Skywalker had to offer me, like the, you know, so kudos to John Favreau, kudos to Dave Filoni. I just think they've done an excellent job. Um, an episode, oh man, episode. Do you know what it was episode eight reminded me of the Iron Man, the first Iron Man film, the fight scene on in in Afghanistan, Guy Mira. I can't be the only one that thinks this because the way that it's shot looks exactly the same. Like the explosion is kind of like happening off distance with IG-11 with Baby Yoda. And you know that IG is coming. I just think this, the, the kind of that long panned camera shot reminded me of when Iron Man um, shoots the tank, walks off and then it blows up, it, you know. Uh, so yeah, man, it, it's just the, the peppering of this show was um, amazing. Ep episode eight was really just everything you want um, in an episode. Um, it just so many. I, I, if I had to say what the the cut, what were my my two or three favorite episodes from the Mandalorian? It's probably got to be obviously episode eight, um, episode eight, and. The sin when 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 Mando goes against the guild. I think those episodes were were amazing. Now the episodes that I didn't like and I felt like they were a bit a bit unstable. Okay, one. Do you know what? I, I don't know. Uh, the one. Okay, the one. Those. Uh, there's only really one episode that I think that. Okay, now we we're, we're wavering a bit here. Was episode five. Now I didn't understand. Why, you know, in episode four, we get the inclination that um, Baby Yoda's not safe wherever he goes. So what I don't understand is, it's like, that episode, op that, that episode opens, he gets to that planet. Um, is it Tatooine? It looks like Tatooine. If I'm wrong, put in the conversation what, what planet it is. 
um, he gets it. And then he just, it just out of thin air, he just decides he's going to just leave Baby Yoda with this repair, this woman this, who's, who repairs and just go on to go look for money or army or whatever he was doing in the episode. I'm thinking he wouldn't, I'm thinking he just went all green. He just, he just went, uh, he just, he just taught a whole village how to defend themselves at, against these people. Obviously went through the hassle of eliminating these threats around Baby Yoda. And then what, he just decides that he's just gonna leave Baby Yoda in the ship. I was just like, I didn't understand that thought process there. Like you could definitely tell, I mean, that, that episode alone was um, from Dave, well, from Dave Filoni. And I thought, you could tell like within that time period, it was like, John Farrell was like, you know, I've got to take a week off and go on a holiday or something. Like I didn't, the, the choices in that episode, I just did, I couldn't get behind. And another thing is the bounty hunter that comes from the guild, he's like, oh, I'm young. And you know, if I go back and, and I do this and I do that, I'll be looked at as a hero. And Amanda just, he just goes along with it. I was like, he would, it, if it, if this was done, if it, for me, if it was really done by John Favreau, he wouldn't have a decision like that because he knows that Mando blows hot and cold all the time. You know, I was expecting him just to turn around and be like, you know, what, get stuffed. You know what I mean? Or better, or or better yet, yeah, pull out his pistol and and attempt to shoot him. You know, I just didn't understand that moment. I just really couldn't. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't particularly think that um, episode five was really a shining moment. Um, episode six was good because it was like conflict field and and the contrast between obviously the, like like that that um, group of mercenaries was good, but I felt like when we when we had gone away from that first person narrative, I didn't find Mando likable in the sense because it's just it, you, you know it kind of gives me the feeling that now i'm just watching a um a villain just do his thing and i didn't want it to i didn't want to feel the sorry the show to fundamentally feel like that i wanted to root for this guy because he's been through a lot okay you don't like him some scenes but he pulls it back because he gives back to communities he helps baby yoda and obviously he has a good origin and a good first person narrative in his life so when the show decided to go away from that in five and six i was like not feeling it now do you know what i mean but episode seven eight they pulled it back uh, and that's why the mandalorian gets a nine out of ten but look i'm looking forward forward to seeing what's going to happen with moff gideon he with that black saber i mean what the bomber clock's going to happen there i don't know um, but on the whole, I really enjoyed this show. I think you should check it out when you have the opportunity to, um, if you've not seen it yet. And yeah, nine out of 10 Mandalorian, um, a Star Wars production, but yeah. Okay then join me here tomorrow because I'll be doing my top 10 best films of the year. So guys, thank you as always like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.